good morning to one and all i wish you a very prosperous and a happy new year may every day of the new year glow with good cheer and happiness for you and to your family once again happy new year okay children today we are going to see a new lesson india's foreign policy what do this foreign policy says about the foreign policy says about as a country's policy it's a country's policy how it has been country's policy it has been conceived designed and formulated especially for the development of country not only that it also to save god and to promote the nation's interest and also the external affairs in relationship with the countries through the trade here is our foreign minister the ministry of external affairs of india also known as foreign ministry it comes under the government of india as responsible for the conduct of foreign relations of india This foreign service training institute has been located in New Delhi. What do this foreign policy says again? It is interdependence with international relationship. So this interdependence says that every nation, every country has its own freedom and never depend but to through the trade we have to contact and have good relationship with other country the main tools of foreign policy it's to make treaties with many more countries not only that also when the treaties or the agreements have been made it should be executed properly under certain rules and regulations also to appoint ambassadors who were called as ambassadors the intermediators between one nation to other nations it gives foreign aid during the natural calamities and in needs of time of every nation also you are well known about this covid period so during this period also it has been given aid from one country to other country through the medicine international trade not only that the armed forces also have been exchange from one country to other country through this foreign policy in need of emergency only in need of emergency well what do the constitution of india 1950 says about so in the constitution article 51 lays down directive principles of india's foreign policy the state shall endeavor to promote international peace and security so foremost of the foreign policy is peace and security and the next one comes to maintain just and honorable relationship between the nations not only that to foster respect for international law and international organization you know well about this international organization it does favor throughout the country through uno united nations organization dear, dear children please understand carefully well the last and foremost is the encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration only through peace talks the disputes can be solved 
so this is also has been done through the foreign policy okay the main objectives says about the natural national security the national prosperity to increase the number of friendly relationship achieving world peace and enable every nation to peacefully coexist and economic development so most properly sorry most probably it is for the peace and security and also with the friendly relationship foremost with the economic development so this foreign policy have been included with punch seal what is this punch seal says about it has been derived from the language sanskrit punch means five seal means virtues so it is a five virtues of for the whole nation's development so it also says about especially have been maintained for the peaceful coexistence between india and china and the bandung conference in 1955 it has been put forth by a former jawaharlal nehru prime minister he was the first prime minister of our country hats off to him for his this punch seal okay now let's see what this punch seal says about it has five virtues let us see about the first virtue mutual respect for each other's territory integrity and sovereignty so every nation has its own border we should not cross the border so we have to respect the territorial integrity and sovereignty their own freedom their own respect have to be united the second virtue is mutual non aggression we should not occupy any of them you know very well there's a problem between india and pakistan isn't it with the border so this should not be done it's called as mutual aggression but what's the panchasil says about mutual non aggression well mutual non interference what's this non interference says about if there is any problem in others nation we should not interfere in that problem so it's their own internal affairs we should not have right to interfere in this but when it has been echoed through the world wide we are ready to interfere well the fourth virtue is equality and cooperation for mutual benefit fifth one peaceful coexistence next we'll see about the basic determinants of foreign policy first one geographical position and size of territory that has to be followed properly the next nation's history the tradition and philosophical basis have to be the de- determinants that has to be followed natural resources have to be preserved economic development have to be maintained political stability and structure of the government have to be created well for the development of the nation apart from this disarmament not to use nuclear weapon but when we say not to use nuclear weapon it is our own respect to safeguard our nation so we have to increase the military strength so these were the basic determinants of foreign policy which has to be followed by the membership countries the next we are going to see is foreign policy in 1950s and 1960s that is after and immediately after the independence so the period from independence through 1950s and 1960s is constituted the most idealistic phase of india's foreign policy under the guidance of india's first prime minister 
Mr. Jarlal Nehru. So what do this says about? It specially says about non-alignment. What is this non-alignment? What do this path of non-alignment says about? There was a two superpowers after the Second World War. Who were they? Yes, they were America and Russia. So, what do these uh, both the superpowers do? They were trying to expand the influence over the newly emerged nations of Asia and Africa. When they wanted to extend their uh, context or their influence, what would happen? Again, the imperialism continues, isn't it? So, this should not be happened. That's why India wanted to insist for the path of non-alignment. That is, not to join with either blocks, not with uh, America or with Russia. So, there is a formation of third block. So, when we call two superpowers, they were called as two blocks, one and two. And whoever join is called blocks together. But... The third block is the countries that none of them joined with America and Russia. They were called as third block. So the formation of third block has been insisted and created and given importance by our former Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay, we'll see in detail what is this non-alignment. It has been coined by V. Krishna Menon in 1953. The aim is not to join in any military alliances. So according to this aim, 120 countries and 17 states have become the members of non-alignment movement, that is NAM. Not only that, it has 10 international organizations also. Especially, it has a political to economical movement with the contacts. Let's see about the founding fathers of NAM. Jawaharlal Nehru of India, Tito of Yugoslavia, Nasser of Egypt, Sugarno of Indonesia, Yami Nakrum of Ghana. So, how was this uh, foreign policy during the Cold War? What was this Cold War says about there's a war or there's a dispute which is about to burst between the two superpowers, America and Russia. But either of them never wanted to show that or prove that. That is what is called as Cold War. How was it? During this Cold War, many treaties have been signed. Indo-Soviet Treaty have been signed in 1971. Uh, it's a treaty for 20 years pact, especially for peace, friendship and cooperation. So, in 1974, India conducted a Bukhrin test, that is a nuclear test in Rajasthan. And that is it. And the next, NAM determined the freedom of nations also. So, they never wanted to keep silence. They wanted to do their work. They wanted to improve in their status, prove their dignity throughout the nations. Not only that, it also has been strengthened the defense system. So India does its part very interestingly in the growth of the nation. Also with the new developments in the foreign policy in the 1990s and the 20th centuries. The global economic order have been developed. What is this LPG? You know very well. Just recall L is for liberalization, 
P is for privatization and G is for globalization. So it's a very, very important economic development theme, LPG. It has been emerged with the support of Western powers. Next is, it asked uh, India was about to enter into GATT. They signed in GATT. It has been entered into bilateral, that is trade between two countries, trilateral, that is trade between three countries, multilateral, that is trade between two or more countries. So this also India have been signed in the improvement or in the development of the nation. The shift in policy also manifested in fold. So what was it being manifested? How it was being manifested? The first one we are going to see is the better relationship with China. But uh, we know how this uh, relationship have been strained nowadays. The second nuclear test at Pakhran in 1998 in Rajasthan have been made. The defense procurement relationship with Israel has been renewed. Energy diplomacy with Iraq countries and Iran have been developed. Agreeing at the U.S. nuclear missile defense program and not only that, India's vote against Iran at the International Atomic Energy Agency. So with this, the policy has been manifested by the India. So the foreign policy have been developed, have been given new face to it. Well children, with this, we'll just conclude or just stop the lesson and we'll continue in the next session. Thank you. Dear children, please try to mark the answers and learn and write. Get your parents' signature. Post between 5 to 6 today itself. Thank you. God bless you.